So now we're getting like one little climb, one after another. So we're still stair stepping our way up. We got to climb and a little downhill climb, little downhill climb, little downhill. But the climbing, more climbing than downhill. Ha! This is what most climbs around here are like. So you can actually gain quite a bit of elevation in like three, four, five K, but it's not continuous. So we're going to the furthest away tower that I can see on Google Maps, but I have to come out here some other time and actually explore all these other roads. Apparently they're okay with people coming out here and visiting, but they just want you to stay away from the towers. There was a sign that you're supposed to, visitors are supposed to check in, but I have no idea where you're supposed to check in. Another tower there, slowly spinning away. I wonder how much electricity it creates at that kind of speed. And we're still climbing, stair-stepping our way up and up and up. So yeah, look, I think we're gonna make pretty good time on the way back because man, there's lots of gonna be lots of downhilling. So I've been out here twice. Once on my motorcycle, once on my Celsa Fargo. Both times we turned here and went up to one of the big towers with a kick-ass view. So now this is uncharted territory for me. I, I've never been down this part. But I think we just, looking on Google Maps, we just keep following this road and it ends at the final tower, which looks like it overlooks a lake. So we've been out for an hour and we haven't seen a single human being, not a single vehicle on this road. So it's like we've had it all to ourselves. Take a drink. So I go to check on my uh, GPS, see we're going down the right road, but these roads don't exist on uh, the map card that I got with my Garmin 800. It's another huge tower over there. It's cool because the top is obscured by fog. It looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. downhill here. Icy downhill so I'm not taking any chances. So there's a big tower in the distance. I don't know if you can see that. I think that's where we're going. So it looks like we're gonna have to climb climb pretty high again. We're at 23K, 
23.2k so we got another 3-4k to the turnaround point we're at one hour 25 minutes of riding so it should take a little more than an hour and a half to get to our turnaround point but it should be faster on the way home so I don't I don't know if we'll quite get in three hours which was kind of the time goal for today today's ride the big tower spinning in the fog road keeps going and we're going to the furthest point so and we're at 24.4k so just a few more k this road should end at a wind tower coming over a ice road at over 40k an hour okay so on google maps yeah so looks like there's a trail that keeps going and i saw that on google maps and then we swing to the left so we're definitely going the right way i'd like to go explore that uh, my motorcycle next summer so i'll definitely be coming out here for a dual sport motorcycle ride and uh i got a couple buddies that might want to come along okay i had to stop and uh switch out batteries and memory cards also had some problems with my whiz mount backpack so i don't know if i'm gonna have uh that second camera angle for this vlog hopefully i will one of the bolts in there came loose on the whiz mount mount and uh the camera shifted position to probably a completely useless view I've corrected it and I've uh, tried to tighten the bolt, but the bolt is the nut. The nut's a, a nylock nut, but I don't have a wrench. I need like a 10 millimeter wrench to hold the nut. That's okay. This footage from this chest cam should hopefully still make for a decent vlog, but it's nice to have uh, multiple camera angles. Makes it more interesting for you, the viewer. And now uh, we have a chill. I mean, it's not cold, but it's really, really damp. And because the sun isn't shining, it doesn't help any. Wow, you don't realize how big those blades are until you get up close to them. that out so I think these are the highest highest ones and it's noticeably windy up here so we must be up in a air current almost at this elevation It's not really elevation, but for around here, it's elevation. Geez, if it wasn't such a foggy day, to the view is absolutely gorgeous. A sweeping curve on an icy road. in an hour 40 minutes to get to the turnaround point last tower road should end here which it does
hear it generating. I hear the blades whistling in the wind. And an actual beautiful spot. If uh, it wasn't for that fog, we'd be able to see Lake Superior and probably the Sleeping Giant Peninsula. So we'll definitely have to come back out here on a sunny day. I'll probably do this ride multiple times because it's a awesome ride. And you hear the blades slicing into the wind. Cool. All right. There's nothing on the left to do but turn around and start heading back. Because that's what you do on an out and back ride. <laughs> Very cool ride. This will be a sweet ride any time of year. Okay, so I think from here, starting here, it's now mostly downhill all the way back to the car. Should be serious amounts of fun. There's only one real uphill left that I know of, that I remember. Two and a half hours in, we have yet to see another human being or another motor vehicle. Nice little bit of isolation for us. Gorgeous lake, base of the cliff. Okay, here comes our last real uphill. Average speed has climbed up to 18k an hour. I think at the turnaround point it was just under 16k an hour. So we might actually end up averaging almost 20k an hour after we're done this hill and get to the car. It'll be pretty fast cruising for a fat bike. Okay, so now we're at the top of that, uh, the brutal, brutal climb that we did. So now we start heading down. All right, here we go. This isn't the steepest part here. We go down and then we hang a right and then we get to the crazy part.
top speed 55.3 you know if I wasn't feeling like such a chicken shit that's definitely over 60k an hour easy on a fat bike well over 70k an hour on you know a 29er mountain bike so I changed batteries in the Hero 3 because it died so now I'm on my third battery on my Hero 3 Plus and my Hero 2 which is in the whiz mount still has battery life in it which is strange because Hero 3 is supposed to have longer battery life well we just ticked over three hours so that was the goal I was looking for for ride length and we just made it probably less than two minutes from the car well here we are in my car so that's the Trans Canada Highway that you see just over there so we'll see plenty of traffic there uh, but basically from this point forwards For a whole ride there and back, we did not see a single human being or a single other motor vehicle for 55.8K. Ride was three hours, two minutes. The average speed of 18.4. Says we did 787 meters of vertical. So wow, a lot of, lot of climbing. Average heart rate 130 and 55.3 kilometers an hour max speed. So that 787 meters We'll have to see when it goes on Strava because I think it ends up being uh, corrected. So it might be less or it might be more. Uh, I think usually it actually ends up being more when they correct it. So yeah, that was an awesome ride. That was one of the coolest rides I've ever done and ever done on my fat bike and ever done, period. The terrain after we pass the Ulmet Canyon just gets totally awesome. And the wind towers were awesome. So uh yeah, I'll end up posting a link to uh, the Strava page for this ride, so you can check it out. Put it on satellite view when you look when you see the map, because uh, you'll be able to see all the wind towers if they're using uh, a recent Google image. They hopefully they are, and uh, feel free to follow me on Strava. Um, yeah, and if you're not already a subscriber, subscribe. I hate saying that. I feel dirty. Don't normally ask for subscribers, so yeah, you might not hear me ask for that for. A while again. Uh, thanks for watching.